Hey everyone, I just got my 40 gallon breeder set up and I've got some electric blue a car in there and I just got my FX406 set up and I didn't think that was enough filtration so I added a couple sponge filters and it's really awesome and the water looks so great but it still wasn't enough so I want to show you what I did. Come on, let's take a look. All right, so this is my 40 gallon breeder and what I did because the FX406 wasn't enough and the sponge filters weren't enough, you know what I did? I went ahead and I added this Marine Land Penguin 350 because I heard it's a decent filter so I put it on there because I really want to make sure my water is okay. And then over here, I heard that the Seachem, uh, it's a good filter and they just came out with the Seachem uh, 35 and that's on here too. But then I realized I don't have enough sponge filtration. So hold on, what, I, what I'm gonna do, it's gonna be so awesome. I got these aquarium co-op sponge filters and I just think if we have one in each corner to match the other types of filtration, it's gonna be better. So I'm gonna go ahead, and I'll do this later, but I'm gonna put the, the, sp the sponge filters in over here and I'm gonna put another one in over here. And I think it's really gonna work. And I think once we have all that filtration, I won't have to worry about it anymore. And, and you know what's even better? I probably won't have to do any more water changes. Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and in this video we're going to be talking about a question that I see pop up over and over and over again and that is, is it possible to over filter a fish tank? Now up until about a year or a year and a half ago I hadn't been on Facebook. I, I was never a Facebook person and then as I got on it I started seeing some of the questions pop up in some of these aquarium groups. It really struck me as though we're still addressing this issue about overfiltration and about how much filtration is necessary in a fish tank. And that's one of the things I want to address in this video today. So stay tuned. And so maybe some of you have seen this on Facebook or other forums where they've already got a canister filter on a 40 gallon breeder or a 55 and now they want to add a hang on back filter and maybe a sponge filter as well. And so we're going to address that today. Now I've done a video on how much filtration do you actually need. I'm going to put that in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below. It goes into more detail concerning what we're going to talk about here. But here we have to understand that there are three types of filtration. Biological, there's chemical, and there's mechanical. From a biological filtration perspective, the vast majority of fish tanks are greatly overfiltered. If you look around our fish room, you will see the vast majority of the tanks that we have have only one sponge filter, maybe two, and a few of them have a hang on the back as well, and we're going to explain why that is in a moment. But from a biological filtration standpoint, most filters have more than enough surface area, depending on the media that you add to the filter, to deal with the load in that tank. We also have to understand that not only is the filter surface area for the tank, but so are the decorations, the gravel, the glass, and so all of those things could potentially house beneficial bacteria. I think one of the most eye-opening fish room tours I ever did was Lucas's Fish Room, LRB Aquatics. I'm gonna put that in the upper right-hand corner. I promise you're gonna see some things that are very surprising when it comes to filtration. Hundreds of tanks, and there really aren't any filters going on in those tanks, no sponge filters in the vast majority of them, no hang on backs, no canisters, nothing. When it comes to biological filtration, the ability to house microbes that take our really toxic ammonia and turn that into toxic nitrite and then convert that into far less toxic nitrate, most filters are gonna be able to do the job. So in that respect, if we're worried about the nitrification process, we really don't need to worry provided that we've had the patience to cycle our tanks properly. I've done videos on ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, nitrogen cycle, all of those will be in the description below as well if you need more information. So let me show you a really good example. This 50 gallon low boy, it has a canister filter and we shut it off and forgot to turn it back on and it had been off for weeks. The only thing running in that low boy was an air stone, that was it no other type of filtration. Now it's planted, and I would say it's relatively lightly stocked. It's got about a half a dozen mollies or so, maybe 10, because there's a few babies in there. It has a couple of epistos, half a dozen quarry cats, and a couple of bristlenose plecos. But no ammonia, no nitrite. I am absolutely confident I can leave that sponge filter, or I can leave the canister filter off forever, and I'm not going to have water quality issues pertaining to the nitrogen cycle. In this tank, we've got some super red bristlenose and at times we've got over a hundred of them in a 20 long. 
right now I'm running two sponge filters and the only reason I'm running the second one is so that I have a cycled sponge filter to put in other tanks. But the vast majority of the time, this tank is running one sponge filter and that's it. And you can see the size, not once have I ever had ammonia or nitrite or any kind of water quality issues related to the nitrogen cycle. Now, granted, there are a lot of plants in there. We've got a lot of jungle valve growing out. We've got some hornwort in there. Some crypts are growing out. But the point is, the surface area in that tank is more than sufficient to deal with the cycle. Even with some of our non-planted tanks, just a sponge filter, that's all we have. So the point here is that yes, the vast majority of us way over filter our tanks when it comes to biological filtration. And by the way, that is by far the most important type of filtration. We get that right, our fish are gonna probably be okay. We get that wrong and our fish are gonna die regardless of how clear our water is. I did a video on water clarity and I showed you the difference between really clear, awesome looking water and water that didn't look so clear. And it turned out the water that didn't look so clear was even better. I'll put that in the upper right hand corner as well. But we have to uncouple what water looks like compared to how healthy that water is for the fish. So when would you want to maybe run more filtration? Well, I think the first one, and this is something that we have done, is when you purposely want to set up redundant systems in your aquarium. So for instance, we had a 75 gallon, when it was running just hang in the back filters, we could have run one hang in the back filter that would have taken care of that tank completely. Instead, we got two smaller ones, just in case one ever went down, we had a backup. We did the same thing with our 150 back when we were just running hang on the back filters. And that may not have to be two hang on the back filters. It could be maybe you've got a hang on the back filter and you've got a sponge filter in that tank. What are some other reasons? Well, I think that has to do with the other two types of filtration. The next one is mechanical, and that's the ability of your filter to pull particulate matter out of the water. And in this case, sometimes additional filtration may be necessary depending on the fish that you keep. So if you've got fish that are really stirring up the substrate or they're just really messy eaters like our Oscar or some cichlids, and as they're eating, you just see all that food debris coming out of their gills and that's getting into the water column, yeah, then maybe if you find, okay, the sponge filters are doing a great job of biological filtration, but they're not doing a great job of pulling that particulate matter out of the water column. Maybe you add a canister filter. Maybe you add a hang on the back filter. And in fact, that's why we do it. So any tank where we have a hang on the back filter, it is strictly there for mechanical filtration to pull stuff out of the water column to make the water look a little nicer. But understand, when it comes to that particular aspect, that's more of a human thing than it is for the fish. Now granted, we don't want the fish swimming around in food debris and waste. That's not healthy for them either. But when it comes to when people want those fish tanks where it's like, I'm looking through a window. That's awesome and that's a very legitimate reason to want to have more than one filter. But understand that as long as our nitrogen cycle is working completely, we don't have ammonia, we don't have nitrites in the tank, the water quality issue is more a personal preference thing than it is for the fish. The third thing is chemical filtration. A lot of filters really struggle with this and it's really not about the filter as much as it is about the media you're putting in the filter. So for instance, maybe we're having some issues with an ammonia spike or a nitrite spike and we want to put some specialty media in a filter bag, in a filter, to deal with that temporarily. Now please understand, if you're new to fish keeping and you have an ammonia or nitrite spike and you've got a hang on back filter running, it doesn't do any good to put another filter on a fish tank that just came store bought right from the store using the store bought media, basically sterile media. It doesn't do a thing. The one thing that it will do is if you put, let's say an ammonia or nitrite lowering media in there, that may help temporarily get the ammonia or nitrite down so it doesn't kill your fish. I consider that more of an emergency situation than any type of long-term solution. One of the things we wanna be really careful of and one of the things I think happens quite a bit is we have a problem with our ecosystem. Our fish tank is not properly balanced. Either it's way, way overstocked, we're feeding way too much, the light cycle is messed up, or as is common the case, we haven't had the patience to let the fish tank cycle properly. We think that adding more and more and more filtration is going to deal with that issue and it probably won't. Usually what that issue requires is patience and understanding the ecosystem and how much bio load your tank can actually handle. Even when we're dealing with cloudy water and a mechanical filtration issue, 
I did a video, one of the most popular videos we've done is on cloudy water. I'll put that in the upper right-hand corner description below. Often, people want to default to more and more filtration to clear cloudy water. If the cloudy water is due to excess food or excess waste in the water column, that's one thing. But often, cloudy water is due to bacterial blooms, usually because of wa poor water quality. And that can be not doing water changes frequently enough, a new tank where now you've got an ammonia or nitrite spike, and that leads to a bacterial bloom. And again, when it comes to adding extra filtration, that in and of itself isn't going to solve that problem. In fact, often when people add more filtration to a fish tank, sometimes it's because they don't have the right filter media in the filter they already have. So for instance, if you want a filter that pulls stuff out of the water column and does a really good job of water clarity, one of the things that we do in our hang on the back filters, really we've only got two things in there. We have a sponge, a coarse sponge, and we have filter floss and a lot of it. And that is what's going to trap the debris from the water column. So I really don't care about bio rings or putting lava rock in there or anything that's gonna house massive amounts of beneficial bacteria. Again, the sponge, when it comes to biological, the sponge filters, the tank itself is doing that. The hang on back, if it's there for mechanical and that's really what you want, make sure you've got media in the filter that's actually going to trap the stuff. All right, everyone, I would love to hear from you in the comments section below. What are your feelings? Maybe I'm completely off base. In the comments section below, let me know what you think about overfiltration and filtration in general. By the way, if you would love to have one of these awesome shirts that we're always wearing, I've got the website is finally up and running, primetimeaquatics.com. You can check it out. We've got the shirts there. If you enjoyed this video, found it useful, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.